Finish this hard cider. I did buy some more beer though, and I still got a bottle of scotch I haven't touched yet. Some 10 year old single malt. I just haven't been in a mood to get completely obliterated. <laughs> okay. Chapter 11 of Alma. And there's a little heading above this. Uh, actually, even uh, in uh, 16, I read it in the last chapter, but let's, let's go over that one more time because it's been a little while. All right, coming up here. An account of the sons of Mosiah. So we're going to switch scenes, follow some other guys around who rejected their rights to the kingdom for the word of God and went up to the land of Nephi to preach to the Lamanites their sufferings and deliverance according to the record of Alma. Yeah, comprising chapters 17 through 26, inconclusive. Just reading what's on the page. Chapter 17, now here's the masthead. Ammon in the land of Ishmael. Sorry, hay fever's driving me crazy today. It's windy. I just came back from a union rally and uh, was out in that wind under all these trees, so I'm a little messed up. Yeah. Ammon in the land of Ishmael. He becomes a servant of King uh, Lamoni. Yeah, that gets interesting. Uh, his heroic defense of the king's flocks. Shades of Moses <laughs> in Midian. I mean, with Jethro. <sighs> and now, it came to pass that as Alma was journeying from the land of Gideon southward away from the land of Manti, behold, to his astonishment, he met with the sons of Mosiah, journeying towards the land of Zarahimla. Two. Now, these sons of Mosiah were with Alma at the time the angel first appeared unto him, before Alma did rejoice. Therefore, Alma did rejoice exceedingly to see his brethren in the Lord. Yay! That's him rejoicing. Uh, and they had waxed strong in the knowledge of the truth. For, for they were men of a sound understanding, and they had searched the scriptures diligently that they might know the word of God. Three. But this is not all. They have given themselves to much prayer and fasting. Therefore, they had the spirit of prophecy. Yeah, you go with that hunger long enough and you pray and pray, you're going to fucking have a loose mace there too. Yeah, maybe even a seizure to go with it. Yeah, this, they had the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation. And when they taught, they taught with the power and authority of God. Four. And they had been teaching the word of God for the space of 14 years among the Lamanites, having had much success and bringing to the knowledge of the truth. Yay! By the power of their words, many were brought before the altar of God. I don't like the sound of that. Think of sacrificial lambs. 
to call on his name and confess their sins before him. <sighs> Five. Now, these are the circumstances which attended them in their journeyings, for they had many afflictions. They did suffer much, both in body and in mind, no doubt. Such as hunger. Well, fine, they were fasting, idiots. Maybe if they'd have pigged out, they would have had some fat to burn off when they were hungry. Or why didn't God drop some manna from heaven? Ugh. Yeah, such as hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and also much labor in the spirit. Six. Now, these were their journeyings. Having, having taken leave of their father, Mosiah, in the first year of the judges, having refused the kingdom which their father was desirous to confer upon them, and also this was the minds of the people. By the way, I forgot to read these footnotes. All right, there's a footnote here. And this is what it says exactly. From about BC 91 to 77. That's what they think that little time elapse was worth. <laughs> uh, six, yeah. Yeah, journeys, having taken the... Uh, Okay, yeah, seven. Nevertheless, they departed out of the land of Zarahimla. We're in flashback mode, I think. All right. And took their swords and their spears and their bows and their arrows and their slings. And this they did that they might provide food for themselves while in the wilderness. Eight. And thus they did, and thus they departed into the wilderness with their numbers, which they had selected to go up to the land of Nephi to preach the word of God unto the Lamanites. Nine. And it came to pass that they journeyed many days in the wilderness. And they fasted much. So stop bitching about being hungry, dickheads. <laughs> they fasted much and prayed much that the Lord would grant upon them a portion of his spirit to go with them and abide with them that they might be an instrument in the hands of God to bring, uh, if it were possible, their brethren, the Lamanites, uh, the knowledge of the truth to the knowledge of the baseness of the traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. Ten. And it came to pass that the Lord did visit them with his spirit and said unto them, Be comforted. And they were comforted. <laughs> Eleven. And the Lord said unto them also, Go forth among the Lamanites. Is that what they're already doing? To bring, to wait, to go forth among the Lamanites, thy brethren, and establish my word. Yet ye shall be patient in long suffering and afflictions. <laughs> that 
ye may show forth good examples unto them in me. And I will make an instrument of thee in my hands unto the salvation of many souls. Twelve. came to pass that the hearts of the sons of Mosiah and also those who were with them uh, sorry for that. Uh, those who were with them took courage to go forth unto the Lamanites to declare unto them the word of God. 13. Being a gentleman here, folks. Remember, I started this series drinking right out of the bottle. I think I'm drinking less this way. It's all measured and shit, sort of. <sighs> Thirteen. And it came to pass, when they had arrived in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, that they separated themselves... <coughs> Uh, and departed one from another, which is what you do when you separate from somebody. Trusting. <laughs> Trusting in the Lord that they should meet again at the close of their harvest. That's people they're talking about. Or they uh, suppose that great was the work which they had undertaken. Fourteen. And assuredly, it was great. For they had undertaken to preach the word of God to a wild and a hardened and ferocious people. Good idea. A people who delighted in murdering Nephites and robbing and plundering them, which... <laughs> Guess is worst. I guess you get the full package deal anyway. <laughs> uh, and their hearts were set upon riches or upon gold and silver and precious stones. Yet they sought to obtain these things by murdering and plundering. <sighs> that they might not labor for them with their own hands. Well, I mean, murdering and plundering is probably broken ways. Probably break a sweat, I guess. <laughs> Fifteen. <sighs> Just because. <sighs> Thus, they were very indolent people, many of whom did worship idols, and the curse of God had fallen upon them because of the traditions of their fathers, notwithstanding the promises of the Lord uh, were extended unto them on the conditions of repentance. How many times can you repent? God damn it! God, shut up already! I'm talking to the book. <laughs> I do that. People talk to the TV said I talk back to the book sometimes. <laughs> uh, so interesting to be videotaping this phenomenon. Uh, <laughs> Sixteen. <laughs> Therefore, this was the cause for which the sons of Mosiah had un taken the work that perhaps they might bring them unto repentance that perhaps they might bring them uh, to know the plan of redemption 17 therefore they separate themselves I think you should have said wherefore at that point alright anyway therefore I think they're slipping into modern again 
Therefore they separated themselves one from another, and went forth among them every man alone, according to the word and power of God which was given unto them. A single golden moldy oldie. <laughs> That's all right. They'll start slipping in some old phrases again. Digging deep. <laughs> Eighteen. Uh. Now Ammon, being the chief among them, or rather, he did administer unto them, and he departed from them after having blessed them according to the, their several stations, having imparted the word of God unto them, or administering unto them before his departure, and thus they took their several journeys throughout the land. Nineteen. And Ammon went to the land of Ishmael, the land being called after the sons of Ishmael, uh, who also became Lamanites. Twenty. And as Ammon entered the land of Mishmael, the Lamanites took him and bound him, as was their custom to bind all the Nephites who fell into their hands, and carry them before the king. And thus it was left to them, wait, left to the pleasure of the king to slay them. <laughs> or uh, to retain them in captivity or to cast them into prison, which is captivity, isn't it? I guess it's something different here. Uh, or to cast them out of the land according to his will and pleasure. <laughs> 21. And thus Ammon was carried before the king, who was over the land of Ishmael, and his name was uh, Lamoni. And he was a descendant of Ishmael, not the son of Abraham Ishmael. Twenty-two. And the king inquired of Ammon if it were his desire to dwell in the land among the Lamanites or among his people. Twenty-three. And Ammon said unto him, Yea, I desire to dwell among this people. For a time, yay, and perhaps until the day I die. <laughs> yeah, isn't that wonderful? Uh, 24. And it came to pass that King Lamoni was much pleased with Ammon and caused that his band should be loosed, and he would that Ammon should take one of his daughters to wife. 25. But Ammon said unto him, Nay, but I will be thy servant. I'll be your bitch instead. Yeah. I'll be your thy servant. Therefore, Ammon became a servant to the to King Lemona. Lemona. <laughs> Lemoni and God damn it That's nice. It came to pass that he was set among other servants to watch the flocks of Lemoni. Shades of King David. He's now the good ship. And a little bit of Moses, being the good shepherd, also. According to the custom of the Lamanites. Oh, really? 26. And after he had been in the service of the king three days, he was with uh, Lamantitish. Wait, he was with, with, he was with the... Lamb man, Tai Tish, okay. servants going forth 
with their flocks to the place of water, which they'll name. Alright, oh, alright, oh, they name it this time. Yeah, flocks to the place of water, which was called the water of Sebus. And all the Lamanites uh, drive their flocks hither that they might have water. Yeah, shades of uh, early Exodus. 27. Therefore, as Ammon and the king, uh, Ammon and the servants of the king were driving forth their flocks to the place of water, behold, a certain number of Lamanites who had been with their flocks to water, uh, behold, a certain number of the Lamanites who had been uh, let me do that one over again. 27. Therefore, as Ammon and the servants of the king were driving forth their flocks to this place of water, behold, a certain number of the Lamanites who had been with their flocks to water stood and scattered the flocks of Ammon. Yeah, early Exodus. And the uh, flocks of Ammon and the servants of the king, and they scattered them, insomuch that they fled many ways. They scattered them in so much as they fled in many ways. 28. Now the servants of the king began to murmur, saying, Now the king will slay us, as he has our brethren, because their flocks were scattered by the wickedness of these men. And they began to weep exceedingly, saying, Behold, our flocks are scattered already. 29. And they wept because of the fear of being slain. Now when Ammon saw this, his heart was swollen within him with joy. For he said, I will show forth my power unto my fellow servants or the power which is in me in restoring these flocks unto the king that I may win the hearts of these my fellow servants that I may lead them to believe in my words. 30 And now, these were the thoughts of Ammon. Wow. We know his thoughts. When he saw the afflictions of those whom he turned to be his brethren, 31, and... It came to pass that uh, he flattered them uh, by his words. Uh, saying, My brethren, be of good cheer, and let us go in search of the flocks, and we will gather them together and bring them back unto the place of water, and thus we will preserve the flocks unto the king, and he will not slay us. 32. And, how, much, how many more drinks do I have? Last one. I'm sorry, this is a long chapter. And I'm a little bit impaired. 32! And it came to pass that he went in search of the flocks. Wait, they went in search of the flocks. And they did follow Ammon, and they rushed forth with much swiftness and did head the flocks of the king, and did gather them together again to the place of water. Command decision there, Ammon. Uh, Ammon. Uh. 
33. And those men again stood to scatter their flocks. But Ammon said unto his brethren, Encircle the flocks around about. Man, that's a lot of guys. If it's a king's flock. I don't know. I mean, we don't know how many how big the flocks are. They didn't give us any flock in numbers. Uh, encircle the flocks round about that they flee not, and I will go and contend with these men who did scatter our flocks. 34. Therefore, they did as Ammon commanded them, and he went forth and stood to contend with those who stood by the waters of Sebus, and they were in number not a few. That means they didn't bother to tell us how many. But there were, there was more than three probably, because it said not a few. It was more than three. Probably a lot more. Thirty-five! <laughs> Therefore, they did not fear Ammon, for they supposed that one of their men could slay him according to their pleasure. For they knew not that the Lord had promised Mosiah that he, that he would deliver his sons out of their hands. Neither did they know anything concerning the Lord. Therefore, they delighted in the destruction of their brethren. And for this cause they stood to scatter the flocks of the king. Thirty-six, And Ammon stood forth and began to cast stones at them with his sling. Yea, with mighty power did he sling stones against them. Shades of King fucking David. Nothing original about this book yet. And thus he slew a certain number of them, insomuch that they began to be astonished at his power. Nevertheless, they were angry because of the slain of their brethren, and they were determined that he should fall. Therefore, seeing that they could not hit him with their stones, they came forth with clubs to slay him. 37. But behold, every man that lifted his club to smite Ammon, he smote off their arms with his sword. Their arms or their weapons? <laughs> I guess their arms. I mean, you know, arms or, you know, weapon. I don't know. I think he cut their fucking arms off. All right. Uh, their arms with his sword, and he did withstand their blows by smiting their arms with the edge of his sword, which is the best part. You want to cut something. <laughs> In so much that they began to be astonished and began to flee before him. Yay! And they were not a few in number. <clears throat> and he caused them to flee by the strength of his arm. <laughs> Thirty-eight. Now six of them had fallen by the sling, so definitely more than a few. And there was more left afterwards, so maybe as much as twelve. I don't know. Or a hundred. Or a billion. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for the info, guys. Yeah, six of them had fallen by the sling. But he slew none, save it were their leader with his sword. And he smote up many of their arms as were lifted against him. And they were not a few. Thirty-nine. And when he had driven them afar off, he returned, and they watered their flocks and returned them to the pasture of the king. Shades of Moses and early Exodus.
He returned. They were. He returned, and they watered the flocks and returned them to the pasture of the king, and went, and then went in unto the king, bearing the arms which had been smitten off by the sword of Ammon, of those who sought to slay him, and they were carried in unto the king for a testimony of the things which they had done. And that's it for seventeen. the fuck out have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you might be having oh and uh this is what I was listening to <sighs> nice huh I think I'll play some more